Well, pit stops are occurring once again. Here comes Marlin and the others. John Kernan reports. Well, as you said, this is what the leaders did not want to see, but those guys running in that second pack of cars are just thinking they're lucky stars. Sterling Marlin, the leader, brings the Maxwell House four down onto pit road. He will go to work. They will go to work on the right side. It'll be a four-tire change. They will also make a chassis adjustment as Mike Beam comes across. Marlin on the top of your screen. Davey Allison on the bottom. Right sides are going on. All already, the jack swinging around to the left side of the car. Now, Sterling expected to get an adjustment also on the spoiler. They were thinking about beating that up. Allison's team now putting on his Joey Knuckles and yeah, go, go, go. Davey Allison will get out now to beat up the spoiler a little bit. Sterling's way and Jerry is in Earnhardt's pit. They've already changed right side tires, John. That left side has gone on to Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. And Sterling Marlin goes by Earnhardt and Elliott on pit road headed back to turn one. Remember, this is the first time these guys have been able to pit under the yellow flag. They've only had one pit stop. That was a green flag stop with right side tires only. So we're under caution here at Talladega, Alabama, Talladega Super Speedway for the 23rd annual running of the Winston 500. Chevrolet trying to get their first win for 92. We'll back to more from Talladega after this. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Winston 500 from Talladega, Alabama. And for the first time this afternoon, the leader of this race is Elmo Langley in the pace car. We're under our first caution of the day and involved an accident out of turn two involving Charlie Klotz back. And Elmo was saying, am I ever going to get out there and make a few laps? <laughs> but and look who won the race out of the pits, ladies and gentlemen. Ernie Irvin must have just changed two tires or something like that. I think that was the case because he... He did get out first by a pretty good margin, really. So I think that he perhaps did uh, just change two tires. Ernie Irvin is right behind the pace car as we are cleaning up the uh, crash site over out of turn number two. Charlie was able to drive the car down the road just a little bit, but then uh, it stopped and is being pulled into the garage area on a hook. Davey Allison's right behind Ernie as we get set for the restart here in a lap or two. To Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt. There's still 25 cars in the lead lap, fellas. There's Jeff Bodine. As he's taken a little bit of a breather from the 192 plus mile an hour pace that was being set. Jimmy Hensley also carrying one of our in-car cameras. He looks almost as relaxed there under caution as he did during, <laughs> during the high speed. Morgan Shepard. Sitco car also taking it easy. And Bobby Hamilton also carrying one of our in-car cameras here today. He's conferring with his pit crew. We saw his right hand underneath his thumb is a button. When he presses that down, he's able to speak to his crew. Well, let's go down to the pit area for a report from Dr. Jerry Punch. Bob, you know how some drivers are pretty superstitious. They like to get some good luck charms. They get rabbit feet or whatever. Well, Dale Earnhardt has a good luck congressman here in his pits. So when the, we're with the Honorable Claude Harris, the congressman of the 7th District here of Alabama, lives over in Tuscaloosa. And, now, Congressman, how did you get to be a good luck charm? And you're dressed up in the Goodrich Youth Rat. How did this work out? Well, two years ago, I was Grand Marshal here, and, uh, and Dale won. And, and so uh, he asked me to come back this time and uh, bring him some good luck. And so I, I, I'm here, and I'm rooting for him. Now that's some horsepower, folks, when you can get a congressman to come in and put on your pit uniform and stand here all day to be your good luck charm. Let's go up pit road where Terry Labonte, unfortunately, is behind the wall, but our John Kernan is there. Well, Jerry, they say all good things must come to the end. Terry, you were the only driver to have finished in the top ten. Obviously, that's going to end today. What put you out? Well, I guess we burned a piston or something. I really don't know. It's a shame. I'll tell you what, our guys have done a great job all year. Uh, we got a week off, and we'll be back. But... Uh, you know, it's just, it's disappointing to, to fall out because we had a good streak going. We'll just have to start a new one. How did you like the Ford as compared to the other makes you've driven this year? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. It's a good car. Uh, we were off just a little bit on their chassis. We were trying to wait for a caution flag to uh, to adjust on a little bit, and uh, then we lost the cylinder, so it didn't matter. What's the plan with I know in speaking with you last week at Martinsville, you weren't quite sure how many races you'd run the Ford. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it might have changed today, but... Uh, We'll just have to wait and see. That's Terry Labonte, gentlemen. They're getting ready to go a green again. Well, he should know which uh, car feels best this year. He's been, have been in three different ones, an Oldsmobile, a Chevy, and a Ford today as uh, Elmo brings the pace car off the track on the pit road. And we get set for a resumption of racing in the Winston 500. It'll be Urban, Allison, running in third position as they get the green flag as Sterling Marlin, then 
It is Dale Earnhardt running in fourth. Green flag is out once again. Stanley Smith's up in the fifth spot. And Morgan Shepard's trying to go, on out, go by him on the outside. He moved up right against the wall. Said, you're not passing me on the outside. I, I might be a rookie, but I know that true. There's Stanley, car number 49, just ahead of Morgan Shepard. Here now, comes Davey and Sterling and Dale and uh, who else? Who else? <laughs> it might be good by Ernie. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be. He loses the lead, now loses second, about to lose third. And here comes Stanley Smith joining the group at the bottom of the racetrack. And Ernie is already back to fourth as Allison now leads. Inside Morgan Shepard's car as he looks at Stanley Smith. Stanley's able to get back in line. There's Ernie going by Morgan on the outside. And so Bill is Bill Elliott. Looks like Morgan has lived on the bottom of the racetrack all day, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He, he likes to run down there. We're getting closer yeah. to the halfway point, and to enter the Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes, call 1-900-436-7000 before the halfway lap, which is 94. The car will cost you 95 cents. You must be 18 years of age or older to enter. If you're called back during today's race and you can name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge, you will win a new Chevrolet Lumina Z34, and you can win an instant prize for having the correct UPC code from a Gillette product. Gillette Halfway Challenge coming up in about 12 more laps. It's lap 82 now, and the halfway point is 94. There's his Ernie pulling out on the outside, trying to go by Stanley Smith on the outside, but once again, Stanley's not going to do that. Alan Kowicki, the car behind Bill Elliott. Rusty Wallace, right behind Kowicki. Ricky Rudd, Ricky Chevrolet. Basically nine cars now in that lead draft. And bringing up the tail, the caboose on the train is Ricky Rudd. He wants to stay in line. He see the big pack of cars behind him. He wants to stay in line so that that pack can't catch up to him. But he sees this race up front of him here. Or he might have it this time. He might have finally gotten on the outside of Stanley Smith. I think he has. That will put Stanley back to the end of the line. He'll be the caboose on this train. We have seen the Winston Cup points battle tighten every race this year to the point now where the top five separated by 83 and in case you just joined us let's uh review who has done what so far davy allison he's okay harry gant off the pace very early he's lapsed down terry labotti is already out of the race bill elliott is running well and so is alan kowicki so again we're going to see a tightening of the points in this event harry gant is currently being shown in 30th place one left behind the leaders still on the inside can't get the back to the inside once again ernie urban looking to the outside of dale earnhardt as they come down through the trioval but he falls back in line and six cars nose to tail down through here the top six davy allison leading looking for the second leg of the winston million for 1992. we'll be right back afternoon at Talladega, Alabama, and King Richard is uh, falling back on the field as we watch this uh, group of cars running nose to tail up front. There's the King. He seems to be back up to speed now. The last lap, the last lap he was very, very slow, but now he seems to be back up to speed. I think he might have got uh, in some traffic there that maybe even a little bit of a tap that uh, caused him to have to back off for a moment, but now he comes back up on Dale Jarrett there. Jarrett had just passed him the lap before. Jarrett and Jimmy Spencer. Spencer had a something malfunction on the restart of this race and got four or five cars. Jarrett is one of them really behind on the restart if they're trying to catch up now. Sterling Marlin trying to take the lead down in turn one. Earnhardt thought about following, but he said, no, I don't think that's going to be wise. He moves up and now Sterling Marlin once again has the lead. Oh, he's just about the only one that we have seen uh, go from second or third to the lead. He's got a strong car, no question about it. He's got five or six drivers right behind him. Just a minute ago, Sterling Marlin told the crew he wanted that halfway money. He wanted it bad. They 
Of course, everything is teamwork now in racing, so he really almost has to ask for permission. So they turned him loose and said, go get it. And that was a lap ago when he went by Davey Allison. Now it just remains to be seen if he can stay out there until halfway.